Hello again, humans! It is I, Jim the Ape. And while I try to build up the will to make a response to a video so insane it will undoubtedly make me want to end my own life prematurely, I figured I would try something a little bit easier. So I hopped on Twitter for a bit and caught up on all the character-limited stupidity. So without any further ado, this is Twat the Fuck, Episode 2. First up, we've got a black woman with a completely unpronounceable name, as racist as that undoubtedly makes me sound, and apparently she visited a Cracker Barrel for the first time, which, by the way, I've been there. It's not the worst dining establishment I've ever been in, but it's nowhere near the best, and probably wouldn't even crack the top hundred. At any rate, she was apparently so shocked and terrified to see, as she described it, a sea of white folk in cowboy hats, that she thought to herself, will they let my black ass walk out of here? Hey, you know that thing where a white woman is walking down the street and a couple of black guys guys are coming the other way, and she crosses the street to avoid them, and then you say how horrible and racist that is? Yeah, you just did the same exact thing with white people. You looked around the restaurant, and instead of seeing a bunch of individuals with different personality traits, behaviors, and desires, you saw a stereotype. A monolithic, negative, fear-mongering, racist stereotype. So, in the future, could you maybe not do that? Thanks. Next up, we've got another person with both the victim card and the race card in their proverbial identity politics poker hand, and they're reacting to the announcement of a show that hasn't even been filmed yet called Confederate, which will be on HBO and will be co-created by D.B. Weiss and David Benioff once they're done with Game of Thrones. The show, much like Amazon Prime series The Man in the High Castle, follows an alternate history where instead of the Union winning the Civil War, the Confederate South wins and successfully secedes from the Union. Well, apparently the Mandela Effect is legit, and this motherfucker traveled here from an alternate universe where that actually did happen, because he literally says, No one needs to see a show that imagines the South winning. We already live in the reality. Awkwardly putting in a period in between every word like that retarded clap emoji bullshit. That doesn't make you sound profound, it just makes you look like a retard. And that's on top of the fact that you literally just claimed that the South won the Civil War. Who the fuck is your history teacher? Because if they aren't fired immediately, our entire education system has failed and should collapse in on itself both figuratively and literally. I move for controlled implosions of all school buildings in the country to the sound of Alice Cooper's Schools Out. All in favor, say aye. Those opposed? Very well, the eyes have it. Continuing with the theme of black people are oppressed and white people are the devil, we have this person who says, All white people are racist. White middle class, white working class, white men, white women, white children, they can all get it. Well, I don't know what getting is, but apparently it's some kind of white exclusive superpower. But then again, if an entire demographic of people can do it, is it really all that special? Probably not. Anyway, there's not much to say about this one in particular, but I can say that generalized all people of a certain race as being racist and then proceeding to say that they can all get it is incredibly fucking racist. And before you go throwing that tired old prejudice plus power bullshit at me, no. It's not a useful definition of a concept like racism to tie institutional power to it because that undermines the ability of the individual to be guilty of it. And it's biased as fuck because you really only do that to excuse black people for all the horrible things that they say about, and sometimes even do to, white people. And as if to respond to the backlash that the previous tweet undoubtedly garnered, we have this bastard love child of Milo Stewart and Christy Winters, both in looks and in political ideology, saying, I am sorry if all white people are racist hurts your feelings, but being killed by police hurts black people's feelings a lot more. First of all, I've said it before, I'll say it again. Fuck your feelings. Fuck my feelings. Fuck everyone's feelings. Feelings don't matter.
I really should turn that into a t-shirt or something. Let me know if any of you would be interested in buying that. Anyway, it's not about my feelings, or yours, or anybody's. The reason you get shit for saying all white people are racist is because it is a blatantly untrue and patently absurd statement. Not to mention the fact that you yourself are white. But that doesn't even matter to the substance of this discussion because, as I've said before, if you define important concepts like racism so broadly that everyone is guilty of it, you water down the meaning of the word until it's basically meaningless. And yeah, there is a problem with police brutality and a lack of accountability, but that doesn't exclusively affect black people, even if blacks are a majority of the victims. So it isn't, or at least it doesn't have to be, a race issue. Not to mention, a lot of the cases that are touted as examples of racism on the police force actually involve the decedent being armed and or dangerous criminals who were not cooperating with the police at the time. And some of them were full-on fighting with the cops. In other words, the circumstances surrounding their deaths were a bit more complicated than just racist cops killed them just for being black. Next, we have another one relating to the Confederate show. This one is a thread, the bulk of which is not terribly important. But someone brings up the man in the high castle comparison, and this guy responds with, We all hate the Nazis. That's history. They don't really exist anymore. Well, thank you for admitting that. Now will you please tell all the insane Antifa-style SJW maniacs who call everyone they don't like Nazis just so they can justify punching them. That'd be great. He continues, the effects of slavery and racism are still very present here. Okay, there's a couple of things I want to say about that. For one, you may have the faintest sliver of a point about the effects of racism still being felt, since racism is always going to exist as long as different tribes of humanity from different regions of the world exhibit different physical traits. But where exactly are the effects of the transatlantic slave trade still being felt today? Because slavery has been outlawed in America for about 150 years. Not only that, but black people have ascended to every position of power imaginable up to and including the presidency of the United States. Not all people have the same advantages, I know, but Barack Obama, Colin Powell, Condoleezza Rice, Oprah Winfrey, etc., are proofs of concept that black people can be successful and can make history just as much as any other demographic can. But people still want to use their skin color as an excuse for their own personal failures and shortcomings. And granted, some of them do face legitimate challenges, but those who only pretend to in order to garner sympathy are the most pathetic form of parasite known to man. So my question then is, how exactly does a practice that has been outlawed for a century and a half still have effects on today when something that happened only 75 years ago doesn't? Draw me the line between slavery and today and actually demonstrate the effects it still has. I'm willing to hear arguments, but I'm betting the degree to which early American slavery affects modern society is pretty minimal. Well, I mean, other than the fact that Black Lives Matter slacktivists keep bringing it up as a talking point. And last but not least, rounding out this all-racism edition of Twat the Fuck, we have this. A photo of a track and field runner with another unpronounceable name. Damn it, I just can't catch a break today. Anyway, it's an innocuous picture to anyone who knows anything about the world, but unfortunately, the kind of people I make fun of on this channel don't seem to know very much about it, hence why I laugh at stuff like this. One very offended commenter left a long spiel about how we are all the same inside and that no one should be labeled that word that is printed on the runner's shirt. The problem is, the word printed on the runner's shirt is not, in fact, the infamous N-word, or as those of us who aren't afraid of words call it, nigger. No, the runner's shirt actually says Niger, which is the African country the runner is from and is therefore representing, probably in the Olympics. This person would know that if they had ever seen the Olympics and saw all the other runners with similar shirts 
that say USA or Germany or France or whatever. That's literally all it is. But this is the problem with being so fucking sensitive about a word. Because with only 26 letters in the alphabet, there's not all that much in the way of word variation in the English language. So it's very easy for a word to be just one letter off and to create awkward situations like this one. So don't be afraid of words. And definitely don't restrict an entire demographic from being able to even utter a certain word without being called racist, regardless of the context that they said it in, while simultaneously having no problem with another demographic using the same word as a term of endearment with only a lack of enunciation separating the two. That would be fucking insane! Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Twat the Fuck. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. I always appreciate that. If you didn't, and you think I'm a racist, go ahead and give it a thumbs down. Of course, you can let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. I really am serious about the t-shirt thing, and I want to gauge how much interest there is in a Jim the Ape t-shirt store, but I feel kind of awkward even asking about it. Either way, if you like my content, please subscribe and click the bell icon to turn on notifications. If you really like it, you can support me on Patreon and get whatever rewards a small channel like mine can even offer. Any amount you pledge would be greatly appreciated. You can follow me on Twitter and vid me in case anything should ever happen to my YouTube channel, but hopefully it won't. As always, thank you for watching. I'll catch you next time. Stay great, apes. School's out for ever. School's been blown to pieces.